Hey guys, my name is Willow and I'm the new fiddler and in this video we are helping out a fellow beginner violinist and a Twitter follower of mine, Rainia, and he needs some help. So let's get on to it right after this. Just uh, one more thing before we uh, kick off. Just hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button as well so you know when I make videos. Okay, so today, this morning for me, uh, I, I got a message from uh, a, a nice young guy on Twitter and he asked me uh, if I could just help him with some things to do with the violin. And of course. I said yes, and I said, you know what, man, I'll even make you a video. And so this is the video that I'm making for him. So you guys are kind of spying on our exchange here. And so his question was mainly about uh, the first position. So he's a two month adult beginner fiddler and he learns online. So I wanted to just put together um, a video that'll just help clarify a lot of things because I think a lot of online teachers like to just go okay this is how you hold it this is how you do it this is how the fingers go okay let's learn a song and I think they rush a lot of things and then it confuses beginners here we go so let's let's start at the start here right so the first thing uh, the, fir the first myth that I want to break and, and get through really quick is that you don't need a good violin. You just need a mass-produced, cheap violin. The only thing that you should really do in your first two months is buy a really good set of strings. So these are Didario Helicords. Ta-da! Okay, so there's the box. Dario Helicore strings, medium. Uh, and I also bought, because I am also an online learner, I bought a fret sticker. So these fret stickers are very cheap, you can get them on Amazon. One of the most important things is a decent uh, shoulder rest. You really need a decent shoulder rest. And this is a Wolf. Secondo, Wolf Forte Secondo, I believe. Here, wait, I can show you. Yeah. It's a, it's a Wolf Forte Secondo. If you have this kind of setup, you're gonna succeed. It doesn't matter how bad you think you're gonna, you, you are doing, you will improve on something that has decent tone, a mass produced body, and a decent shoulder rest. Okay, next. Okay, so of course your student violin will come with a bow. In your first two months, you don't need anything crazy or new, uh, expensive. It just needs to be a proper size, so you're an adult, so a 4-4, okay? And you need to know how to hold it properly. And again, your, so I'm not gonna mention who your online uh, your online tutor is because that's between me and you but she it will teach you how to hold your bow properly and follow it to the to the letter man like you know keep keep your, your little finger bent and and stuff like that so the one thing I want to show you though that a lot of people don't get is this okay okay so sorry I'm not looking at the camera because I'm not in my usual place. I'm in my kitchen, so I have my phone facing me. So if I keep looking over here, it's because I keep looking at my screen to make sure that I'm not out of shot. So sorry guys. It's not my usual New Fiddler Hardy Dark production. Okay, so Rosin. When this comes in your in your case, it's shining, and when you when you rub it on your bow, it doesn't do anything because it's too shiny. So you have like a a nice shiny layer on it, and you need to be able to break that layer with just a piece of sandpaper if, if 
there's some lying around the house or ask your parents or go to the, your hardware store and you, what you want to do is like don't be scared like give it a, like so that's what it looks like now for me yeah okay so now that's that's white and that's that's the stuff that goes on your bow so if it's if it's your first time so go up and down like eight, eight times if you've done it before and just do it a couple of times, do it like up and back during every lesson. Now what you have is a rosin bow, uh, a bow, uh, a violin that is uh, set up ready for you to use. Okay, total beginner setup. So this is what you want. This is what you want to be starting day one. Put put your violin into your chin and start working on how it feels. You want to get that comfortable spot. Now, like <clears throat> a good uh, sort of like progressing violin violinist will have a really good solid hold. And basically they kind of say like, oh, you know, you can just put your violin into your chin and go make a sandwich. Well, honestly, I've never experienced that. Like even with this, and even with the t-shirt on, everything. Moving my t-shirt out the way, and changing my chin rest twice, I still can't always get my violin to stay where it needs to be. But what you want is you want your uh, shoulder rest resting on your chest, shoulder and collarbone, and your chin rest tucked in with your head just resting on it. And what you should be able to do, which I said I can't do, is be able to hold your violin in place like this comfortably without it falling out. Because this is how you have, with this kind of solid foundation here, this is what allows you to learn how to be able to do vibrato and stuff like that. Okay, so there's many schools of thought on how you should hold your violin. So a lot of people with good, flexible, wrists will say thumb underneath a hand right around like this so that your thumb is underneath like this fingers are on top like this but I don't have I don't have the forearm flexibility to do that so my thumb sits here and I have almost like a fulcrum point so one is on my thumb here and the other one is against my finger here here and then what I do is, as much as I can, is I roll my hand, this knuckle, towards the violin. So, so this, this is not a correct hand hold like this, okay? You need to roll your hand in. Uh, again, I'm looking at the screen, I apologize. Let me try and work this out. If I stand... Wow, I just did a whole... I just did a pirouette. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Okay. So, oh, this is really difficult. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. Let me see if I can do it without my violin. Okay, so when, when you're looking, sorry guys, sorry guys, knocking you all over the place. Okay, here we go. Okay, so when you're bowing, when you're bowing, the most natural thing for your hand to do when you're not ready so when you're, when you're not experienced is to do this. This is the most natural movement for your hand to do, like this. But the problem is, is that, that's actually incorrect bowing because even though it is so natural for your hand to come down to the side of your, your body, it's incorrect. So when you're doing it, you need to almost aim, you, you come down the strings and then you want to push out. So almost like that. That's the kind of feeling you're getting, even though that, that is like very much over accented. This is the feeling you need to have. So that, so this is the most natural. This is what people end up uh, developing. Kind of like this. But what you want to do is over accent it, bend at the wrist. You can see here that the wrist is bending and when it comes back up the wrist is bending sorry that I'm over accenting so much guys 
that this is what you're aiming for. Is this up and down. And then what you want to do is watch. So now that you're pushing, a, again, most natural feeling, but now that you have that feeling of pushing away from the body, you just got to watch how the bow is acting on the strings. Because sometimes you could push too far out and so that your bow is too far forward now. So what you want to do is like, once you have that feeling that the bow, your, your hand is pushing away from the, from the, from your body, you then want to correct it so that it's just right. Just like that, oops. Just like that. So now I'm, I guess like, now I'm using the camera view, pretending that that's my eyes. And you can see that now like I'm bowing straight, but it can be very, whoops, but it can be very easy to come back to this sort of feeling. And a lot of the times what you find is you'll have straight bow, straight bow, straight bow, bent bow. So it'll always happen on the A and the E string. So when you're up here, it's, it's much easier. There's still that feeling to do this. All right. So I'll just tip that down a bit. So how that looks now is like this. So I'm gonna first do the most natural bowing, like how it feels naturally, but incorrect. So let me just try and get this violin turned a bit. what it looks like when you over push the you can almost see straight away that I'm over pushing okay so and it's a matter of trying to find the middle ground there but again It's been a, I know I've been, I know I've been talking for a while and and like really focusing on this bowing, but bowing is so important. It's so it's so so important because once you have it, once you have the stickers on, this is the easy part. It's the bowing that becomes difficult. Just some one more thing about bowing as well is that <clears throat> a lot of beginners will have a problem with the with the old bow bounce. Now, the reason bow, bow bounce happens is that one is that this finger here is not giving enough downward pressure on, on, the, on the stave. Okay, so that's one thing that could be the problem. Now, the next thing is that you've got a straight thumb. You're not really holding. So your proper grip should be so, bunny rabbit ears. Mine tends to tilt towards the, sorry, I'm just striking the light here. Uh, so mine tends to have like a, a forward lean to the, so rather than having this perfect feel like that, mine, mine does this, okay? But my pinky's always bent, and then underneath my thumb, my thumb is sort of, maybe if I hold it up like this, yep. So my thumb is always bent. So a nice banana thumb. Wait, that's no, banana thumb is, is the wrong one, sorry. Okay, but one of the biggest factors that I find that helps to stop bow bounce is that a lot of people when they bow, try to keep the bow stave above the hair, okay, which gives you this kind of hand, okay? But what I find is that if you roll your hand forward so that the stave, the stick, is in front of the hairs, so it actually goes towards the front of the violin, just a little bit, so that if we were to look at it from an angle like this, you can see the hairs. So that's what I do, is I, I, I roll it over a little, maybe I'm pushing it forward a little bit too much, but that's one thing that I do is I roll the stick forward. As soon as I'm like this and I can, I can really feel that bow bounce coming through, especially on that A and E string when you're down here. When it's bouncing everywhere, I, I try to just roll my wrist forward as I play. So I'm just like, I just 
roll this forward straight away. Okay, so let's talk about what it was that you asked me to talk about. And that was, so you, you asked, you, your message was, I want to be able to play everything on one string. And if you're a two month violinist, basically I'm guessing you want to be able to reach that fourth finger. Now, fourth finger, in your first year of violining, fourth, fourth finger is, is hard to do. And it's just like your other fingers. It, it needs to be trained as soon as possible and it's just a matter of getting used to it. You don't need to incorporate it into any of your little um, scales that you're doing, or you don't need to play songs with your fourth finger. You, you know, you can always jump onto the next string, of course, unless you're on the E string here. So as a two month beginner violinist, don't pressure yourself to know how to use your fourth finger. But, so the main things, the main strategies for fourth finger, here, let me put my bow down because I'm probably not gonna be playing, okay. So the main strategies to, to focus on to be able to hit that, okay. So for other people watching, so Rainier has a problem with being able to reach his fourth finger on the G string, as we all do in our first, six months of practice. So the only way to really help yourself uh, improve your fourth finger is to, okay, so first of all is, let's see if I can line this up properly. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is be able to bring your elbow over. Now, again, as a dude, it can be very difficult with the muscle that sits here. It likes to, to stop, there's a, a tendon that runs up here, up to your first finger, and it can be very, it can be very tight, and, and sort of restrict you from being able to reach over. So the first thing, to, our first habits that we tend to have is that we tend to, as beginners, when when we stand like this, our elbow likes this. I'm going to over exaggerate, but it tends to sit like this. So when we're playing we have all this tightness and pressure around our knuckles here. And if you're like me and you have like hobbit fingers, like it, it flattens your fingers. So the first thing you need to do is you need to teach yourself to be able to bring your elbow right in. So it literally needs to sit almost, this point here needs to be sitting past the center of your left pec. So it needs to be coming more and more to the center. You need to be pushing in as hard as you can. Okay, that's wrong. Not as hard as you can. You need to bring it in to its limit and you need to stretch that limit more and more. And what that helps you to do when you have a nice solid violin in your chin and your elbow is all the way over, these fingers start to relax a bit. And it allows you, and even with me, with my tiny little hands, can reach that fourth place. That fourth finger can reach its spot right there. So even for someone like me who has very short fingers. Now, it does take a while. You can even see here that the muscle in my forearm is completely tense. There's no way for it to be able to relax when I'm reaching for that fourth finger. Okay, so to be able to just bring you up so, we can, so I can see you. Hey guys. So to be able to increase your flexibility, I might step back for a moment. To be able to increase your flexibility of your your of this tendon running down here and up into your first finger, again for, for for other people it could be the second one, it could be the third, or people can even find that they feel the strain in their little finger. But for me personally, the strain on every finger comes up through here, through this part here, and to be able to fix that, so hold your hand in front of so hold your arm in front of you. Again, put it in that position where it would be with your violin. So do a reverse sw swan, so reverse the swan. And then what to do is put your finger or your hand here on your knuckle and push down. Just completely relax your hand here 
and just push down and then this finger, try and get it in here as much as you can and you'll feel a stretch come straight down this tendon here. Now, be careful, don't overstretch. Like, like all of our fitness gurus here on, in, on YouTube tells us, don't overstretch. As soon as you feel that pressure, just hold for five seconds and then release it. Okay, and then come back. Point the finger around here and push gently. And you feel the stretch. You can almost see, for me, you can see the tendon go white over, over here, over my knuckles. That's about as far as I can get my finger. So I, I have no hand flexibility at all. But I have worked construction, laboring jobs all my life. Okay. So that's the stretch that you want to do just to be able to get that, that hand into that violin position. Okay, so the next thing with trying to, and almost as soon as I've stretched my hand now, my hand just feels so much more relaxed, not relaxed, my hand's never relaxed. My hand feels more flexible. Like I feel like now I can really move around more. So it does help uh, to stretch out that tendon in your hand if you're struggling with the fourth finger. So let me just see if I can find that position that we're in before. So lowering you down guys, lowering you down. Okay, so actually reaching this fourth finger, it's really difficult for you to see that. Okay, so to be actually, to be able to reach that fourth finger, okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to set up your hand. So if you can see my, my hand here, my hand here is actually sitting past so we can see here the yellow line is our first finger position. So you can see straight away, my hand is sitting on the wrong side. So when we reach for that position over here, you can see that my, the beginning of my, my palm is sitting below the, 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 the first line there. So what we wanna try and do is bring it, bring it up a little bit so it's closer to that line, reach, Okay, so to be able to hit that fourth, that fourth finger there, you need, you need to be able to set your hand up as well. So when, when you're playing, when you're doing scales and the first three fingers, okay, are very easy to reach when, when your hand is located here. But if you have a short finger, so the, where my hand is sitting now like this, okay, you can see that there's almost no way with all my reach that I can, I can go for that fourth position. I just, I can't reach it. It doesn't matter how much I strain, like you can see I've got some pretty white knuckles there. I can't reach that. So to be able to do this, you need to learn to be able to one, shift your thumb. So as soon as I move my thumb, let's try this again. So there, like it's, it's a strain, damn it's a strain. But on that, G, on that G string, I can just touch that if I move my thumb. So I guess you need to be able to so you're learning to be able to move these fingers, okay? These fingers are moving. And a lot of the time, where your thumb is positioned, if it's underneath or on the side like mine, it always stays still. And this, is, I guess, is like the next step to becoming a better violin, is that you have to learn to be able to move that thumb up and down a little as you need to reach. So like, the more you move your thumb, the further you can reach. Yeah, so now that I've moved my thumb closer to my second and third finger, my, my first finger is still in the same position, but I'm actually able to reach over that fourth finger. So even with small, small hands like mine, you can still reach from your first finger to your fourth finger. 
but it all comes down to where your thumb is positioned. Now, maybe it'll get to the point where you will always play with your thumb closer to your middle finger than it say than resting on your first finger. Which I mean, if you can learn to do that, that's okay. Like that's that's okay. I think honestly, I think we all go through this thing. We all go through, here. Hello. Okay, guys. So I think we all go through this period at the beginning of our violin journey of believing that like fourth finger is like whoa, it's like the the next step into advancing, and it is in a way. But if you can treat using your fourth finger just like you use your third and your second finger, uh, it's not going to feel like you're making this huge uh, technique adjustment or, or that you're advancing. You just have to keep practicing uh, easy, easy beginner tunes and just dropping in that fourth finger every now and then. Because the more you, you do that, the more you're sitting here focusing on rounding your hand and just getting that fourth finger, eventually what you find is it will come naturally. Now, another thing as a beginner in, is to know when to use your fourth finger and when to then change onto the next string. Because that's all you're doing. You're playing the same note as the open string so for instance, when you're on the G, so fourth finger on the G is just D. So it makes you wonder, I think that you spend a lot of time going, why do I need to do that? Why do I need to change? Why do I need to put my fourth finger down when I can just change the next string? And this, yeah, exactly. But it's more of a, a technique thing is that to be able to bow like this very quickly to is easily substituted by just dropping your finger, your fourth finger on there, and it does the same thing. But again, that is something that you will learn. Like, your violin, online violin teacher will discuss this with you. But the main thing you need to do is get your elbow nice and over. So get your, your elbow nice and over. Stretch out this ligament here it's in your hand. Try to get uh, forearm flexibility if you're a dude, especially if you work out. And the next thing then is roll your hand over and reach. You've got to learn to reach. And, and most importantly is that playing your fourth finger on the G string is not easy. It's not easy to do. So don't beat yourself up if you can't do it in the first two weeks of trying to use your fourth finger. Practice, 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 and it just one day comes and you just start using it, especially when you incorporate it into a song that you're learning. That's when you really understand what the fourth finger is for. Okay, so something else that's uh, quite common in the, uh, <clears throat> I think more of the, the fiddling community rather than the violining community, and that's, using a drone track to make sure that your intonation, so your your sound is, is in key. So, <clears throat> they're pretty hard to come by. Um, the drone track, a drone track is kind of, if you can imagine, it's like a, it's like the bat, it's like the drone on a bagpipe. That's the easiest way to say it. So it's like, Neh. let me just, so I just got my laptop here. So give me give me a sec. I'll just <clears throat> okay. So just on the New Fiddler website is <clears throat> a drone page. So I'll just quickly scroll down, guys. So you can just find it. <clears throat> uh, in you'll be able to find it in the description below. There'll be a link to the drones. So you can see here there's drone tracks. This is a D drone, this is a G drone. Okay, there's an A drone. Okay, so what, a, what this is, is, is basically a track and it sounds like this. Okay, and so what that's used for is exactly the same way that a bagpipe drone is used. 
and it creates a harmony when you're playing in that key and it creates this beautiful buzz within our ears as humans. So <clears throat> let me Don't really know if I know any songs in D. Let's have a look. So let's just hit D and So straight away you can hear that it's in tune. It has that beautiful sound to it. Some, add some sharp notes there and flat notes. So, you know, I'm hitting my first year and I still make silly mistakes like this. And what the drone does is it instantly picks up your mistakes. It, if you have a musical ear and everybody playing the violin should have a musical ear. So you'll be able to hear it. It just, it just sounds a little bit off. Let me, I'll do it again and I'm, you know, I haven't warmed up. I've just picked up my violin. So I'm gonna make mistakes. And so hopefully they're really obvious to hear. So I'll just hit, hit it again and we'll, we'll listen for that sound. play uh, a D scale if you want to practice scales you just click on that drone and that was a D drone and play the D scale and you'll hear straight away when you're in tune because you'll have that nice buzz sound like I mentioned before and it's a great way to really help strengthen your musical ear and if you don't have a fret sticker and you are focusing on learning intonation by ear so that everything so no frets this is a great tool it helps to make sure you're doing things correctly so check the link below uh, for drone tracks and click on that guys and just hit go like it should repeat and repeat just just check to make sure it does um, there, are, there is a package down there that you can buy for $2, but don't feel like you need to. Don't feel like you need to. You can use the free ones on there, no problems. <laughs> 